And coming up on News 15, a house fire in Fort Wayne lands a man in jail. Preparations for tonight's 4th of July festivities. And on this Independence Day, a family reunion draws people from all over the world. Stay with us. The stories are next on News 15. When you want to know more, it's smart to watch News 15. Live from Fort Wayne, this is News 15. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bill Wagman. At the top of our news tonight, a 27-year-old Fort Wayne man is being held on arson and criminal recklessness charges. These in connection with a fire last night in the 100 block of East William Street. Police tell us George Thoza Jr. had an argument with 32-year-old Barbara Thoza before he allegedly set a fire in an upstairs bedroom of her home. Barbara, her three children, and a niece all left the house for a nearby grocery store. This to call the fire department. The police reports say when the family tried to return home, the suspect tried to run them down with his car. This is the second time, incidentally, the family's been burned out of its home. Last December, the family dwelling on Walnut Street was destroyed by fire. And fire forced the evacuation of five Blackford County jail inmates this morning. The prisoners were moved to the county lockup at Marion. The fire which caused the transfer was not in the Blackford County Jail itself, but the Tea Garden building next door to the jail. That building, which houses a warehouse, some cars, and a furniture store, was reportedly gutted. The jail itself took exposure damage to the roof and to the attic. State police say three security officers from Grissom Air Force Base are being held in the Cass County Jail on preliminary charges of armed bank robbery. Craig Chapman of Peru, Indiana, Jack Wright of Indianapolis, and William Pizzette of Wyandotte, Michigan, were arrested Friday while running from a branch of the First National Bank of Logansport. The money was recovered. The Kosciuszko County Police say a 26-year-old Warsaw man jumped out of a moving car last night on US-30 near Pearson. They can't tell us why Steve Pfefferkorn did that, but he's in critical condition tonight at Parkview Hospital here in Fort Wayne. Pfefferkorn was a passenger in a car driven by John Netherton of Warsaw. He told the police the car was doing about 45 miles per hour when Pfefferkorn jumped out. Netherton, incidentally, was arrested. He faces a preliminary charge of leaving the scene of a personal injury accident accident. Today we celebrated the 211th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. But at historic Fort Wayne, the clock was turned back a bit. There, the year was 1817. News 15's Rhonda Pickett explains. Visitors got an eyewitness account of an early 19th century 4th of July. Rhonda Pickett, News 15. Workers are digging and planting out at Johnny Appleseed Park, preparing for tonight's fireworks spectacular. This will be the 60th year for the fireworks show, and according to manager Al Schuer, the best ever. I have gone with a lot of the larger shells this year. I've got the, uh, some really nice 10-inch uh, Japanese shells and 12-inch uh, Japanese shells, and also got some very nice special effects, which would be like six shells uh, going off at once, the same type, like palm tree shells, uh, torbillions, which are twirling-type shells, and uh, spider webs, and man, they're always crowd pleasing. The Dick Seeger Band Concert gets underway at 7.15. Fireworks start at 9.15. When News 15 returns, researchers may have found a clue to solving the riddle of what causes cancer. And Dr. Dean Adell has some advice concerning those tan accelerators now on the market. So stay with us. If you haven't had the mumps or been vaccinated for them, Indiana health officials say you should consider the vaccine. In the first half of 1987, we have more than doubled the total number of mumps cases for all of 1986. 753 is the exact number. St. Joseph County has been the hardest hit with mumps this year. Researchers at a Los Angeles hospital have discovered a defective gene that causes eye cancer in babies. And as Glenda Wiener reports, this find could provide clues for detecting other kinds of cancer. About one in every 20,000 infants develops a form of eye cancer called retinoblastoma. Glenda Wiener is at Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. 
The most common form of cancer is melanoma, or skin cancer. But the threat of skin cancer doesn't seem to keep many people from trying to get a dark tan in the summer. Now there's a line of products that claim to accelerate the tanning process. Dr. Dina Dell talks about these controversial new products in tonight's medical report. You've seen claims like this before, promising the perfect tan or your money back. I'm Dr. Dean Adele. A little bit later on, we'll tell you about the history that was made at the Wimbledon Championships. But first, here's meteorologist Eric Salna with a sneak preview of the weather. Eric? Looks like it'll be a good evening for the, forecast, uh, for the fireworks, I should say, but the forecast changes tomorrow. Details when I come back. fine day for barbecues, picnics, anything you want to do on the 4th of July. That's right, Thank Bill. you, Eric. Well, you're welcome, and uh, an excellent 4th of July weather-wise. It'll be a great evening for the fireworks, but rain coming in tomorrow. So let me get right to it, though. Outdoors at uh, last report, Bearfield, they had mostly sunny conditions out there, reading around 75 degrees. I hope you enjoy the show. Let's go to our forecast then for this evening, and it's shaping up mighty fine each and every one of those days. So, Bill, tonight a very nice and pleasant evening, but then the humidity starts to return. I always knew you could make your own fireworks if you wanted to. <laughs> That's that was right. very good, Eric. I like that. <laughs> when we come back, we'll take a look at sports on News 15. A great day for Martina Navratilova, a new U.S. citizen. July 4th, she wins. And just when you think that, you know, her days are numbered and Steffi Graf, the dynamic new star, is going to be number one, Martina proved it. That's right. That's She's the, the best. When the tough gets going. Martina Navratilova reaffirmed her claim to number one today. She won her sixth straight singles title by beating Steffi Graf. It was a great match all the way. The world's fastest bolts are in Madison, Wisconsin this week, rather Madison, Indiana this weekend. It's the third of this year's unlimited hydroplane races. Jim Cropfield will be trying for his third straight win following last week's Thunder on the Ohio win in Evansville. Yesterday, Cropfield smashed the Ohio River course record while qualifying. By the way, Sunday's Madison event will carry a $125,000 jackpot. And, you know, Bill, it's only a shame that no one in this area has ever had a chance to see these unlimited course close to Fort Wayne. We don't have the river space for it, but it's an exciting sport. My youth watching the boats on the Detroit River, it's not quite the same thing around they here. They have the okay. big ones. All right, Tom, thanks a lot. The story of a special family reunion is coming up. Coming up tonight at 10 on News 15 Nightbeat, we'll tell you about a development in the Persian Gulf that has U.S. military officials worried. And we'll have more on the fight brewing over President Reagan's nomination of Robert Bork to the Supreme Court. Plus, we'll show you Americans all across the country and how they celebrated our nation's birthday. We'll have those stories along with Eric Salna's Sunday forecast and Tom Williams Sports all tonight at 10 on Nightbeat. The 4th of July is traditionally a day when families get together, and that was exactly the case today at the Grand Wayne Center. Members of the Berghoff family gathered to look back on past accomplishments, and as Greg Goodwin explains, there were plenty to remember. This is some family reunion. Nearly 450 relatives from 20 states and two foreign countries are in Fort Wayne this weekend to find out who is related to whom and what each of the four Burgoff family trees is like. And the brothers began making Burgo soft drinks. Upon the repeal of Prohibition in April 1933, the Burgoff Brewery was no longer a family holding. So, Gustav's son started a new brewery. Hofbrau became the family's new brew. It proclaimed to be the beer without a headache. Though the name Burgoff Beer disappeared from Fort Wayne in 1954 when Falstaff bought the plant, Burgoff Beer is now being brewed by the Huber Brewery in Monroe, Wisconsin, and is still available in Fort Wayne. Greg Goodwin, News 15. Must have been some reunion. That's the early edition of News 15 for this Saturday. We hope you'll join us again at 10 for Nightbeat. Until then, we have a pleasant evening, and we leave you with some scenes of the festivities at historic Fort Wayne today.
Michael York stars as a German rocketry expert who becomes a key part of the U.S. space effort in the CBS miniseries Space. Part 1 is tonight at 7. Stay tuned now for Wheel of Fortune next on Channel 15.